Now what I've got here on the bench is a uh, panel antenna, 12 dB apparently, and uh, I've had this for uh, some time. I picked it up when I was in Rome, Italy, and uh, I was in this uh, little cheap electronic shop, stroke, you know, uh, tax shop kind of thing, you know, where everything is, uh, say, under a tenner or under 10 euros. And uh, I was in the shop trying to purchase a uh, fan because the air conditioning in the hotel had broken down and uh, this caught my eye and it caught my eye because of the uh, windows vista logo logo up in the uh, corner here so it kind of said to me that uh, this uh, antenna might be knocking on a little bit i have done a search on ebay and i found uh, similar ones for sale on ebay i think i only paid about uh, three euros for this it wasn't a great deal of money but uh, as I say, it's apparently 12 dB. And um, if I turn it over on the back here, we have got the Windows 7 logo. And uh, we've got the uh, USB 2 logo here. But uh, I don't really know what uh, that's got to do with this particular antenna because it connects via uh, SMA. And there's some technical uh, specifications here. And it talks about uh, the amplification of the antenna. And as I've said in previous videos, an amplifier and an antenna are two completely different things, uh, never to be confused. But uh, I thought it might be interesting to take a look on the inside of this and uh, check it out just to see whether it is anywhere near the 12 dBi that it claims. So here's a look on the inside then, uh, not quite what I was expecting. Uh, it looks like a, a simple uh, dipole arrangement in here, Hertzian dipole. We've got uh, one of the elements here coming in at 25 millimetres and the uh, second element over here coming in at 22 millimetres. It's just a, a simple uh, piece of PCB. Um, you know, I was expecting something a little bit bigger to take up the uh, interior of the case. But what I can tell you definitely now is that uh, it's not 12 dB and it's going to be nowhere near 12 dB. So let's uh, flip this over and see what's on the opposite side i'm uh, guessing that we're going to have another element sticking up in the uh, vertical here and vertical here and then uh, clear on here and uh, you may also notice that there's no kind of reflector no tape whatsoever so this is not a uh, directional antenna it's actually going to be omnidirectional and yes on the back here we have indeed got the uh, two dipoles in the uh, opposite direction there and it's a design that we've uh, seen previously it's a design uh, similar to the uh, alpha um, antenna that uh, we've just recently took a look at but uh, you know that's in a completely different league and uh, if i get my ruler here measure these uh, elements then we've got 25 millimeters and Again, 25 millimetres, maybe just a little bit under that one, 20, 24 millimetres possibly. But uh, I don't know why this one on the end here is uh, slightly shorter. Maybe, uh, you know, it's just to balance them all together and get them on centre frequency. But uh, definitely that one is 25 millimetres. But uh, it's certainly not going to be anywhere near the uh, 12 dbi that uh, it claims i mean you'd be lucky to uh, get 5 db out of this uh, you know this kind of arrangement here and uh, it is going to be omnidirectional not directional but uh, just for fun let's take it over to the network analyzer and see what kind of uh, you know uh, center frequency that this does uh, indeed have so test set up exactly the same as you've seen me previously do it here in the lab so let's zoom in on the screen i've got to say it looks like a very unusual waveform so i've got the cursor centered on uh, 2.45 gigahertz that's uh, bang smack in the uh, middle of the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum for wi-fi and you can see we've got this uh, sloping edge on here it looks more like a bandpass filter than uh, an antenna i mean this is just not going to perform at all and uh, although uh, i've had comments before for saying things like this in the past that, but you'd probably be better off with uh, a wire coat hanger it's not going to do anything for you at all it's uh, extremely strange and 
it does indeed look just like a uh, bandpass filter. So we're scanning uh, 2 GHz to 3 GHz at the minute, so let me uh, knock it down a peg and scan from 1 GHz up to 3 GHz just to see what's happening uh, you know, on the opposite side of 2.4 GHz. So now that I've extended the uh, scan uh, from 1 GHz all the way up to 3 GHz, you can see what's going on uh, you know, a little bit uh, further down the scale. Uh, very, very unusual, I have to say. It, as I said, it does look more like a uh, bandpass filter or bandstop filter. But, uh, yeah, there's just no response there. It's not tuned for 2.4 GHz at all. Now, I was going to do a uh, Wi-Fi uh, scan test uh, with uh, this uh, panel antenna. Testing it alongside the uh, Alpha, which is a uh, trusty antenna. And at the end of the day, at uh, 12 dB, this is apparently a lot more powerful than this one. But uh, I stopped filming, I stopped the test, because, as you'll see in a moment, it just wasn't a fair test. Now, you've heard me say in videos in the past that uh, when we've got some of these really poor antennas in, whether it be off eBay or whatever, um, that you'd probably be better off with a uh, rusty nail. So this time, for this video, I have made a rusty nail antenna. It's a monopole antenna with uh, no ground plane, and uh, it is indeed a rusty nail. And I'm going to stake that uh, this rusty nail is going to perform better than this panel antenna. Now, yes, I've already hooked this up and taken a look at it um, to test it alongside this uh, alpha panel antenna, so I have got a little bit of a heads up. And as we saw on the uh, network analyzer, it was uh, pretty damn poor for 2.4 gigahertz. So I'm convinced and, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that uh, this rusty nail is going to outperform this panel antenna, which again, it's supposed to be 12 dBi. So just uh, something simple, I've just uh, taped the alpha card to my uh, helping hands uh, soldering uh, station there. But uh, let's give this a uh, quick scan with the uh, panel antenna first. So there we go then, just two access points now that it's settled down. And the first access point is actually here in the lab with us. It's on the uh, opposite side of the wall. So that's not too far away. That second access point is um, another access point that, that I have halfway between the lab and the house to feed the internet into here. So that's all we're picking up. I'm not picking up any other access points that are around us. And 90% to say it's in the same room. That's pretty damn poor. So let me screw this off. And we'll attach the rusty nail. And straight away you see that first access point has jumped up to 100%. We've picked up a few more access points there. The, uh, they've just dropped off again now. But yeah, the rusty nail is performing better than uh, the panel antenna. That is supposed to be, at the end of the day, 12 dB. So there's not really that much to say about this antenna, apart from uh, if it comes up on eBay as a suggested buy, just, uh, you know stay well clear of it um i mean the case is quite nice and i'll probably keep it just for the case i think we can squeeze something inside there that's uh, a little bit more powerful than uh, the uh, pcb that's in there at the moment and uh, it's certainly the first antenna to uh, get the rusty nail award so yeah when i say uh, you'll be better off with a rusty nail sometimes in uh, this case indeed you would be so any comments and questions, drop them below. And, uh, you know, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. And uh, hopefully you'll join me on the next one.